there's a lot more to computer security than mathematics, right? So, for example, I mean, you can be using utterly totally secure ciphers, right? Your machines can be totally, like, you know, absolutely, you know, in, like, a minute, literally, right? If, if I, so, how many people have had to do this? Like, you know, uh, why, why do you have to root box? You forgot your root password, right? Like, I set this 47-digit password that was, like, three years ago, and then I didn't write it down. Because that's it's yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so and was, you, you, you might have bought the box yourself, and you uh, you just have no recollection of how you installed the thing. You don't want to reinstall it, so you just, you know, so how, how do you do this? What do you do? Boot it, FC Shadow. Bash. Yeah, so, so you have to boot from like uh, OSU control, so like a, you know, a Linux boot CD is totally fine. There's actually some kind of cool like uh, uh, Poco stick is like a distro for doing this, very small. Uh, it's, it's actually got stuff in there to like reset the, uh, you know, the NT password, CHNTPW. So you can, I mean, you, so if, if I can boot the thing by hand, then that's, uh, it's pretty much game over for whatever anybody's trying to protect there. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so hey, that's kind of a problem, right? Because uh, if you can sit down, so there, there were a series of uh, APM USB attacks, which sounds like that should not even be a possible thing. But apparently that was a thing, and a uh, bunch of ATMs that basically, that, no, they call it jackpotting an ATM, right? Where basically you press the right button sequence, and then it's just like, yay, you win money here. Right, and and then the, the AT, I mean, the, the hard part about this is like at the end of the day, the ATM count is wrong, right? Like if they ever go to refill the cash, or they have to go and refill the cash, because the ATM's like, yeah, I'm out of cash. It's like, what happened to all your cash? It's like, well, oh, I, I followed it. And it. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, yeah. So, so this is this is actually kind of amazing, right? Uh, if you look at, uh, so I, I was at uh, I was at Fred Meyer show. Here's the gas pump, right? Gas pump, perfectly normal. I don't know if you see this little door. So the little door, and nobody yeah, online can see yeah, anything. Yeah, gotta, uh, yeah, okay, and it's actually open. And I, I, what the heck, it's for science, right? So I swung the, the door open there, and there's a USB port, right? And, uh, and it's just plugged into the thing. And it's funny, because, uh, let, let me share this so you can see it. Because there's a little sticker right behind the door that says, "Be sure to use only genuine Wayne like replacement parts." Like, well, wait, wait a sec. I I've been scanning my credit card into this box for the last decade. Right? It's got a warning sticker about like, "Don't use any counterfeit parts." Right? That might be insecure. I mean, this is this is like really really bad. So you notice this thing's protected by a lock, right? And. Um, <laughs> It's one of these little round locks in, like you see on a bicycle lock. There's a famous case where, like, you could take a pen and you could take like the round part or any like tube and just stick it into the round lock and jiggle and pop it open, right? Uh, so, so the the yeah. 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 Not all for your locks. Mm. Only some do. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so the, the other thing is, if you look at this little door, right? So this. This door is essentially standing between, like, you know, your credit card number and whoever's outside this thing. So this thing is made of injection molded plastic, right? And it has these little, like, two, two screws, like, holding it onto the plastic. Like a hole? Like a picker over like a sticker. Yeah, so, so, so there were a series of attacks on ATM. Exactly the same way. Yeah, people drill an access hole, upload a new firmware to, like, what was typically, like, an unpatched Windows NT box, right? Because the or Windows XP, right? like, uh, I mean, that, that seems like a huge problem there. And, and, and they're like, uh, why wasn't there antivirus, right? Or why, is it, why, why don't we, like, recognize this stuff? And it's like, if people have physical access to your Windows box, right, they're essentially sitting there at the keyboard, like, you know, anything they want. <laughs> right? Antivirus is not going to save you, right? It's, it's actually quite amazing, because, so, so, so another recurring problem. People think of the security boundary as being in the wrong place, right? So this is an adversarial type situation, right? Uh, and attackers can use whatever's the cheapest way to get into the, the, the box, right? So, so for example, ATM. You have, uh, so, so here's money, right? There's a, there's a giant stack of money in an automated dispenser, right? That's sitting inside an ATM. So you think, well, hey, all right. You can see the outside of an ATM is totally just chunk of plastic, right? And it's like, so, so I mean, the obvious thing is like, well, you know, kick, kick open the door in the ATM and you get the money. 
so so I mean they realize it's a problem, so they put it in a steel box, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a vault, there's a the money, there's a really cool little like elevator assembly that like gets the money out without ever being able to you know, get get in there. So it's like, hey, no problem. You uh, you have to automate this. So what do you put? You put a PC on top of the vault, and like there's literally like a money wire, right? That says like need money, right? Raise this wire, and it's like okay, money. Right, comes out. So, so right, and, and the PC was typically okay. So, a the PC is running like XP because it's just the cheapest, like you know, it's, it's just you know one of these very simple, old, and custom made things. How, how many people have seen an ATM that is blue <laughs> It's a lot of hands, right? Or like you know, the exception encountered and something, something that DLL, and you're like, mm, that's probably. But then it's like, did you ever see anything other than me? I mean, it seems amazing because I can see the standard photos of it. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen quite a few. But the point is, so, so it's actually really hard. So, so you think about like, where is the security boundary in this thing? So, so you think of like, I mean, how many organizations know your credit card number? Right. Well, you know, if you do any commerce, right? I go to the grocery store. Right. Grocery store, point of sale, swipe. So of course, Target has the giant deal where all of basically all of point of sales are in the terminals. We're running this malware. Was just sending a copy of all the swipes off to you know, where, wherever. So I mean, like, like you know, 50 million credit card numbers or something lost, or 80 million lost. Home Depot had the same malware. Uh, and and, and uh, I mean, so, so this is this is a huge problem. Uh, so uh, in, in, in that case, they were accessing via the network. So what are they going to do? Right? They're going to totally like lock down the network. So that would be pretty much totally, totally uh, impregnable. We we, hope. Uh, we we know that's hard. Uh, so what I mean, so, so the next step is like uh, you're going to uh, so, so you might have a totally 100% bulletproof network, right? There's no way to get through the network, but of course, if somebody can kind of bypass the network and they can get physical access to the box, so like you might uh, see anything there. The receipt is there. The point of sale stuff is there. If, if this were like an uh, ATM where you jam your credit card, this itself is vulnerability. So there have been a series of you know sort of security vulnerabilities where somebody will have built a like a little like skimmer that that wraps on the outside. So this is especially bad for ATM because you need two things for an ATM, right? You need the card and you need the pin. You put those both into the same box, unfortunately. So so typically it'd be like that there'd be a little magnetic stripe reader right in front of the normal reader, and then there'd be a little camera to watch you type in your pin. So this thing gets positive, basically collects a certain number of bank accounts, and then uh, and then somebody can just peel the thing off. And I mean, they had three printed shells and such to you know. Go to TransomSecurity.com. Yeah. yeah. All these awesome it's, credit cards. Uh, yeah, it's just incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just it's just incredible. Yeah, all about skimmers. All about the skippers. Like all of the yeah. Like on <laughs> videos of like people who are caught like actually installing them. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so of course the problem is it takes a lot of time to like watch the video. Are they pressing a five? Are they pressing a three? Right? Like sneakers. And uh, so, so you can you can get cleaner data if you just like overlay your own keypad on top of the actual. Like when they press the real key, it goes through your. And there's always some funny, like, weatherproof coating on top of the uh, keypad anyway, so it, it might actually look real legit. So the, the, they, they find these things after they peel them off, but you think, like, the ones that look really good maybe never really get peeled off, except by. It's like accidental, like, they heat them and it just falls off after a while. Well, it's sitting there in the hey. sun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this one doesn't look really. Uh, I mean, it, it makes you think, like, gosh. So I have to like really inspect the ATM carefully. So, so, so on, on, uh, with, with, with computer, we're used to like self-analysis being really good, right? So, in other words, is there any external software in this box, right? So you can look at the services, you can look at the file system, you can look at memory, right? Lots of different tools we have for dumping stuff. In the physical world, what do we got? Our eyes. You can look at stuff. Like it. You could weigh stuff. Right? The, 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 there have been a huge series of attacks like this, and this is—I mean, this is a really old tech. So, uh, so for example, this is uh, this was the power switch on a, uh, a typewriter sitting in the U.S. Embassy in Moscow back in the 1970s, and the power switch actually has like a little radio that's actually like listening to like the magnetic like signal of like keys going down, and then it's you know a little RF transmitter basically, and the person. 
it's the power switch, so it always has power available. And then it's basically like, you know, the next door to the Moscow Embassy, you can just assume is going to be like staffed by, you know, signals analysts and, you know, lots of radio equipment, basically everything they need to reconstruct, anything they can pull. So, so this was, I mean, <clears throat> the, the problem is, okay, we have to, we have to, like, audit all of the typewriters in the embassy, right? And then, you know, if we order replacements, those have to be guarded all the way from the time they basically leave America, because we can trust America. Right. Uh, well, but mostly. Uh, I mean, they have to be guarded basically from the time they leave IBM, because we can trust IBM. Right. So on the factory floor, when they're assembling, like, you know, embassy, like, uh, uh, you know, typewriters, then you have to have a guy watching it. And then, of course, you've just told everyone that these are embassy typewriters. It's a special production run, right? So, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to figure out the whole time. So, so they, had, they had all sorts of beautiful, I mean, the, the Soviets, you know, the, uh, the, the engineers are absolutely absolutely top notch and you know the awesome stuff where like uh, there's this little metal bar that like makes the space bar be able to be pressed from either, either side and uh, you know it makes the whole thing go down and it's just a metal bar in a normal typewriter unless it's been hollowed out a tiny radio has been inserted <laughs> and it's uh, paranoia right uh, so, so, so it's physical physical modification of the hardware totally a thing right and this uh, so, so for example right you think about totally innocuous USB cable right that you might you know, leave plugged into a desktop or something because you might be you need to you know, charge your, uh, your cell phone, or you, it's always plugged in because it connects to the printer, or, right? Uh, so this is big enough where you can actually fit a. Uh, no, no one attacks like this where it's it's possible to cram an entire PC into the plug, right? And hey, it's got power because it's USB. Right? And it's got this, you know, like uh, it has it has. Uh, so so what can you do if you're plugged into a PC? You can log key starts to go by, you know, especially if you like keyboard. Yeah, Not you can right. say like, "Oh, hey, yeah, um, I'm the keyboard," and somebody just press Control to leave, and then, "Oh, I'm a mouse," and somebody just press Yes, reboot immediately, and then, uh, "Oh, yeah, uh, I'm actually a, a USB stick, so you should boot from Linux," and then you should rifle through their hard drive for whatever I need, and oh, they're rebooting again. <laughs> okay, back to normal, right? You do this like you know. One second before Windows would have rebooted anyway, or you just wait for Windows to reboot to let system updates. Hey, you you got root on the box, and it's virtually impossible to to modify this. So how can how can you tell that this is a normal USB cable instead of some modified version? Make it hard. You could destructively disassemble it, but then you need a new one. And where am I going to get a new one? I, you could build it yourself. Yeah. Four yeah, wire. It's four wire. It's, it's not that hard. Yeah. Uh, so, so I could wait, right? The wait changes, then clearly they screwed it up. Yeah, well, if you just buy the cable, right? Like, if I just bought the cable the from China, I mean, it's got to be trusted, right? That's a little worried. You should, you should buy a thousand USB cables that are all then in the vault. Yeah, and if you weigh them, then one of them is slightly different weight. What does that mean? That probably means it was just sloppily assembled. More solder. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, more solder. When they're hand assembled, there's an extra bit of you know, junk in there. Or, you know, it's slightly different mold, yeah, right? They, they got like five molds in parallel of making one. And this is. So, yeah. What is that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 19 <laughs> RPOG. So, how else could you verify this? So, non destructive testing. I mean, clearly, you could, do, you could do, uh, sacrifice one and say, are these all bugs? Well, oh, no, it's just. It has a machine, I guess. Plug it into a machine, though. It's going to be like. They're on to us. Say nothing. Or it's right. like, you can watch for the signal. Yeah, like, yeah. You can just plug it in and, like, while it's in there, like, got yeah, nothing on the other end, send the signal. This is weird. Yeah, the trouble is, it may not do that unless it, like, realizes that it's connected to the right machine. That's the key. Like, one of those USB batteries that never goes dead. How about uh, x rays? This is apparently, that's that's how they get the, the, uh, the typewriters. They're like, we're going to x ray all of our typewriters. <laughs> this makes sense. Trust us. This is, uh, this is a rational thing to do. <laughs> Some, somebody, somebody clever right, realizes, like, we got to, like, you know, non destructively expect. We're going to x ray everything. We're going to x ray every, and that's that's what they, they did, actually. Maybe, Maybe the power switches were, like, bit laid. Some way that they just mm, so felt slightly different or something. Like, this feels mm -hmm. weird. I'm guessing they narrowed it down. Like, hey, we replaced all the power switches and all the typewriters that run all these reports that were released from the Soviets. Probably check out. Yeah. I mean, it, it's amazing how so, so when the Soviet Union falls, they get they, they get access to all the files. Basically. 
Yeah. And, and you know, they, they've been they, they've been really worried about like you know, generals being bribed. That was essentially their security model, like selling secrets to Soviets. And it was virtually never the generals. The generals make like good money and they believe in the country and stuff. Who is, who in the organization has a access to virtually all the secrets and b is a squad? Secretaries. Yeah, secretaries. It's, and the secretaries are like typists, right? And fifties are like, you have to type this up. I'm like, oh, she's making four dollars an hour, right? And it, uh, and so, so, so the, it was the disgruntled, like the you know the yeah, so, so, uh, you know, auditing personnel was really important. And and just like if you can if you can get the janitor not to like steal files, which is like a really dangerous and annoying thing, but just to like swap out, you know, take this typewriter and go take it up for cleaning or something, right? and bring back this uh, the mop typewriter. But, that's all. That's all you need to do. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's really hard to keep track of hardware. I mean, there, there essentially there isn't a real good model for how we deal with you know, non-trustworthy hardware. So, so of course, it doesn't have to be something big, like something external to PC, right? So, so you, you think about what's inside. So this was a beautiful. Uh, uh, so to, you've got a hard drive. This is an ancient hard drive uh, it was, uh, for demonstration purposes. So we've got uh, we got a bunch of chips on there. Maybe it's this easy. Yeah. So, or, or should I just, uh, let's see, should I just... So, uh, let's see, so, so we got uh, so, so a bunch of chips on there. These are actually really big because it's a pretty old hard drive. I think this sucker is, uh, so A has the click of death. Uh, Ubuntu 7. Uh, let's see, I think it's like 12 gigs or something. But anyway, so, so it's, it's, it's old. Uh, so let's see. So, so we, we've got like there's a big ST micro chip there, and that has a zillion pins there. So, so, so somebody actually went through and audited, right? That they say like, what hardware is this on on my on my uh, and on my hard drive? It's mostly more or less custom chips. So like, well, that's interesting. Uh, let me let me grab. So he he, he recognized that there was there was JTAG pins. So you, you, this, it, lots of these things you can access uh, JTAG. JTAG is the Sort of the standard way to debug embedded hardware like this, where there's no no screen, no people with the mouse, and he basically can enumerate everything in the JTAG bus. And there's like three ARM CPUs on there, because there's like there's one really tiny ARM CPU that's just like you know doing the drag mechanics to like keep the head you know, move the head to the right spot. And there's one that's I don't know watching the thing stand, making sure it's kind of right, right. And one of them's doing all the communication to the PC to like manage the data flow. Which ones? And it turns out they were all in the same sort of memory bus, so any of them could read or write any data. So guess what? He was able to actually flash a new program onto any one of those three chips. He showed that it was possible to do, and then he could he could a right he could intercept data going getting stored to the hard drive. He could fabricate data coming off the hard drive. He could make it so like you know you could you could be have been key logging like gigs of key logs for like months, right? And uh, those could have been getting stored to somewhere in the hard drive. But then if you go to read in the hard drive, it's like oh that's all blank. Totally cool, right? And unless you did the you knew the secret knock or something, you just would not be able to read any data at all. So, so in other words, it's lots of opportunity to like. I mean, there's nothing physically wrong with the hardware, but somebody has actually gotten this thing in the lab and they've like uploaded new firmware, and now this thing is like infected. Like your hard drive is infected with malware. Not that way. The hard drive controller is infected with malware, right? You can wipe the drive. BD zeros are the whole thing. It doesn't matter, right? The controller itself is actually still still on there. And again, it's not not real clear how to defend against that kind of thing, except to never let this thing out of your sight. So I, I don't know what what to do about that. Uh, th th there's a million physical attacks. So, so for example, if if uh, if somebody wants your data, I mean, hey, your data's on your hard drive, duh, right? So, so uh, we're going to see the full drive encryption, right? Is the obvious way to I mean, software you know, counter measure for that. So you might be able to say, okay, yeah, the data is. Uh, they realize like you know, hard drive is a vulnerable thing. So all the data is going to be encrypted from this point onward. Uh, the data wasn't encrypted. So, so the way this thing is stored, and I've drilled out all the. Uh, so, so we've got the. I mean, these beautiful shiny platters. Uh, and, and don't do this with a hard drive you care about. Uh, this, this one was dead to start with, and it's uh, it's 12 gigs anyway. So I mean, you, 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 you read right. Uh, so we get the sectors, right? We can read uh, read uh, what is it? Cylinders that way. Sectors is the disk spins underneath there, and it's sort of getting pulled pulled along. And then and then there's actually different platters. So there's actually like six drive storage surfaces top bottom on, on this thing. So all all that stuff is packed in. Uh, so it's uh, it's actually pretty interesting because. Uh, the data is stored as a magnetic pattern on this particular kind of drive, right? And magnetic patterns have this weird property that uh, so, so so what do you got here, right? Physical physical storage of data means that uh, you have a piece of metal that's uh, that, that's storing your data. As uh, as the piece of metal heats up, right, it expands, which means that the read write head has to actually move to a different location, 
And it's so hard drives do a thing called thermal calibration where they're like uh, they, they look for known track data so that they know where their their hard drive head is at, and and they do that at some interval. So if the, if the temperature is rising as you're writing your data, and it's been a while since you've done a thermal calibration, it gets written kind of on the left side of the track. And then if it's been a long, you know, if it's a good temperature cooling or the opposite situation, they might be on the kind of the outside of the track relative to the middle. So, so this is so a, a uh, you take I just touched the platter. Uh, sorry, okay. So, so again, really known known tech, uh, known attack is basically you can read data that's been erased, right, with a like a the equivalent of an atomic force microscope. This is a magnetic force microscope. Or the, just a tiny little of magnet on the end of like what would be an atomic force microscope can read down to like the these are micrometers. It's not quite down to the nanometer scale for hard drives yet, but uh, they're they're working on it. So so, so the deal is uh, right. This is the main data right going going down down there. And you notice this sort of like blurry pattern in between the main data tracks is often the sort of partially erased remnants of old data tracks. So you might actually take your hard drive, do a DD zeros over the entire thing, and the data is still on there, really. And it, the zeros are almost the perfect thing to write to, to preserve the data, because you're just putting this nice fixed pattern. And it might be that they just crank up the amplification, right, that they can still see the old, the old values in there. So, so, I mean, uh, there are these protocols for like hard drive erasure, where like I write it over with random data, because that's hard to do, and then I write it over with random data again, They've shown in the lab that like some models hard drive, there's maybe a, you know really good track alignment usually, except for these thermal effects. Uh, you might be able to get like 20 erasures and still be able to read the data, right? But that that signal is actually still still recoverable. So not a lot of way to protect against that. Right? And uh, I mean, so, so it's it's yeah, and that's that's all there is to hard drive. Uh, yeah, so, so if they have physical access to your hard drive, they can read not only the stuff that's on there, they can read the stuff that's sort of ever been on there. And that might be temporary files that were written during installation, the, the stuff that you had before you realized a full drive encryption was totally a thing. And uh, I mean, that's uh, that's a hard thing and hard part of it. And so so let's keep that thing out of the hands of people that, uh, that you don't want to have access to your secrets. So of course, in modern day, we have uh, solid state storage. That's the, uh, that's the way this stuff works. So this was an iPhone of some type that, uh, is that backwards? Flipped it for me. There's some option somewhere where I can do that. So, so that says Apple A7 instead of the A or something. Uh, and then there's a Qualcomm chip. Uh, and then there's there's some flash storage on there. So, so, so the, the, the deal is that the flash storage is going to more or less maintain its data almost uh, uh, pretty much inevitably. Now, if I reset the flash storage, the the little you know, the, the flash transistors. I presume there's some analogous attack. I haven't actually heard anything about this where you could see like the oh, the, uh, previously over data. So you might actually be safer with flash data, uh, especially like, crappy flash where uh, mul multiple bits are stored on there anyway. Uh, so so, so in, you know, there's the, the hard drive, like magnetic field storage tech, tech is pretty much useless against uh, solid state. I had a weird experience with solid state. So uh, my 3D printer, I'm always copying stuff onto the uh, I'm, I'm copying like new things to print onto the card. I'm putting the card in the printer, and the card sits under like the it's directly under the heated bed. For some reason, so the card is sitting under there getting cooked and red for hours at a time, which apparently they're not really designed for. Because uh, I, I've actually managed to kill a whole series of my cards. So, one of these was uh, was pretty interesting. Weird, weird hang is how I perceived the thing the first time. So, if I look at, uh, at uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, so I've got uh, the, 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 none of those. Uh, you can do this. Oh, I, I keep I keep notes about everything, right? So, uh, these guys can't see. Sorry, I'm lying. Uh, okay. So, so what what's supposed to be on this file is G code. So if if you look at uh, this is the full code, so it's supposed to be like you know 3D printer code to say like oh X Y Z X Y Z. No no problem. I mean it goes on and on and on indefinitely. Uh, Except then, eventually, and uh, if I open this thing up, it says like, "Whoa, you know what? 
there's a sort of tank right there saying like it was ASCII and I was trying to figure out the encoding and at some point it's gonna, gonna spread me bad my editor like won't even open the thing because it's full of minor garbage so dump the data in the file I, I, I was like full on paranoid at this point like what on earth is it and it's like man is this Unicode is this UTF-8 is this like what is this so uh, so if you look at this, so that's uh, that. That turns out is it's uh, G code and uh, more G code, and then binary garbage, and then back to G code. Right. So so notice it's lost one block of the file, right? and, so, and so the so it's like, hey, three D printer, move this way, and then hey, three three D printer, binary gibberish, <laughs> which and the three D printer actually responded up by just sort of twitching and moving to one side. Yeah. Uh, so so so. I had this interesting question: What on earth is this that just showed up in the middle of my file? Right. So it's, uh, I, I have actually still not 100% pinned it down. Here's here's a very interesting thing about this. So uh, here's the histograms, and these are the histograms shown in the same way that we do uh, uh, we, we did like data analysis for our uh, our ciphers. So uh, this is uh, this is a histogram of one new time that happened bad. This was a shorter time, so it's less. So these kind of these little dark dots in this right there. This is a histogram of JPEGs from a digital camera, which I know I've used that those SD cards to store JPEGs from a digital camera. It's maybe not as obvious here. Oh gosh, I've got like uh, there's three decoy title bars and then one real one. So so, so the I, I I think. And it's a slightly different model of digital camera, but I'm pretty sure this is too data. Which is silly, because like I mean my standard protocol for like I take I take my pictures, I upload it on the computer and delete the photos off the, the flash storage so I can take more. In other words, these were so, so these were A deleted off of the flash drive. I tried another interesting thing. I zeroed the entire flash drive. Right? Uh, I then went and read everything in the flash drive. Not all zeros, which is kind of surprising. In fact, there's more of this sort of bar, bizarre binary garbage that looks a lot like JPEG. I couldn't actually find a smart JPEG sequence, so I don't know what that was. Uh, so, so, so the deal is possible for flash storage. I, I, I know flash storage is block allocated, and there's bad block management in a, a flash drive. This is a standard thing. So they have, they have spare sectors, right? So if, uh, if if it's like, hey, you know what? I'm This sector is starting to look so bad. Error rates are getting too high. It will substitute another sector. This old one uh, has your data in it. If you overwrite the file, if you block, you know, overwrite the entire drive with zeros, you don't change the old copy. In fact, if the new copy ends up being dead, it may switch back to the old copy, saying like, "That's that's the only block I got." So, so it's weird. Like flash storage, it may not be possible to like erase things in that sort of old-fashioned expression. So again, the the, the deal is like, uh, if they have physical access to this, uh, you're in big trouble. Ah. Uh, Hopefully, we may hear more about this from somebody. That, there, there's a thing called the cold boot attack. Let's see. And uh, so, cold boot, you uh, you can actually just steal stuff out of RAM. And they've shown that, like, if I have full drive, you know, full drive encryption, so that like you can you can have my physical hardware, it doesn't matter, data is all encrypted. But uh, if they also have your RAM, then they can pull the decryption key right out of RAM. In fact, the the typical way this is done is you just say like. Well, look, you know, there's two to the 128 AES keys that would decrypt this hard drive. There's no way we can search all of those. How much RAM do you have, though? A couple gigs. We can search all those in a few, few minutes, right? So it just tries decrypting your hard drive with everything in your RAM, right? And that's, that's the most obvious brute force way to do it, but that's uh, easy enough to, to do. So, so you can so, so get cold boot attack, right? Uh, Megan, of course, microscope, but I will miss any of this stuff. I don't know. And, and uh, again, so, so the countermeasures to all this stuff is basically like no one can get near your your hardware, which is really a problem because it's hard to keep people out of places, right? So, so you might have. Uh, so you know, look, who keeps uh, people out of places? So you got like the military. <laughs> is there a barbed wire around your data center? There should be. Uh, so, so the military, it's it's actually it's kind of amazing to me how like uh, you can fill a box with rocks. And it, you can pretty much keep anything out. So, so I mean, the Hesco uh, units. Anybody military experience? So, uh, right. So, so it. Uh, I mean, a truck bomb or something will not uh, will not penetrate your firewall. <laughs> uh, 
so, so uh, the box of rocks, right? And rocks are uh, are certainly like the, uh, the like the big dumb. I mean, zip, 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 effectively, this is like a denial service event, right? So you think about Chapman, you think like, okay, there's data in Chapman, there's services running in Chapman, like Netrun, right? Like, what is a truck bomb in the parking lot going to do to Netrun? It's pretty much game over. Right? Uh, so, so, so the question is, I mean, what uh, what what kind of measure we got, right? Like, you can you can pile dirt around the Chapman. But that makes it hard to get into Chapman, right? It makes it look less like a friendly sort of environment, more like a bunker. I mean, even the best bunker. So, so it's strange. I mean, this is actually a solvable problem. Right? So if you imagine, like, okay, we need to prevent the uh, like denial service attack by being repeatedly nuked. So, what do you do? Yeah. So it's got to be a bunker, and it can't be like a like a building-looking bunker. Right? If it gets nuked, I mean, it's not. Right? What What do you? So yeah. they designed this, right? Like NORAD headquarters, right? They're like, well, look, that's going to be the first thing. I've... So we got to make sure that we can still run NORAD without, well, despite like just taking direct nuke strikes repeatedly to the front door. Underground, airship. Un un underground, right? So, 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 so the real trick here is like yeah. dirt, <laughs> <laughs> outer space, <laughs> totally in the field. me. <laughs> Yes, yeah, seeing things coming or something. So, so dirt, dirt is the cheapest thing in the planet, right? Uh, so, so the trick, right, is that they. So, anybody know where Norad headquarters? No, you can't see it. So, in Colorado, uh, I forget the town. Yeah. <laughs> that kept scary. <laughs> so, so all they did, they 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 take a mountain, you drill a hole about a mile into the mountain. Now, here's the problem they realize: if you nuke like the the end of the tunnel, the blast wave actually travels down your tunnel and still like. You know, your whole so, so this is funny. They drill the hole all the way through the mountain, and then the facility is actually behind glass doors, off on a T-shaped tunnel on the side. Like, holy cow! And again, the theory is it should be able to take like repeated thermonuclear direct hits and continue operations regardless. Of so, so, yeah. So, 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 what you do is you have redundant links, like in a hardened, like their own little, and, and that's that's a totally known thing to like send, uh, send and radio, right? You can still radio from under the mountain. You'd have an antenna that goes almost to the surface, or a couple of them. <laughs> so it's totally possible to do this, right? Uh, why do we care so little about security that in Chapman we cannot survive a direct nuclear strike? Keep net run running. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the deal is like we, we have this sort of balance of like well you know it's going to cost some you know what like, a lot to actually put net run into the middle of the mountain. But now I want to do this. <laughs> uh, so so we don't so we don't bother right. That's just not uh, there's there's not a resource there worth uh, worth protecting. So yeah, so so, so into dial service. Um, so so words, it's tough to protect the entire building, right? It's tough to, uh, but like you know, you might have more focused attacks. Like somebody might uh, might like kick down the door, like getting the tank from. And that's it. That's the thing. Uh, so if if you if you right, so, so if you think about like this wall, there is actually a chunk of steel which holds the uh, uh, the stuff. That's uh, that's still fine. So we've got like steel. So so denial of service attacks on steel. This is a half inch thick chunk of steel. The reason it has a shape, and if, if you look at the outside, the outside is this really like rough, but right? yeah, this is this is torch cut. Uh, so so there's this actually famous like uh, security hole in steel, which is that steel steel will burn, producing rust, right? It oxidizes. That, that's the nasty thing about steel. It's really just so filthy. Yeah, so, 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 I mean, thermite attacks are totally a thing, right? Now, th th this is kind of interesting because, I mean, a, a cutting torch is just a, it's a jet of pure oxygen. And it, it basically, it's burning the steel, and it's uh, actually a thermic reaction, right? It's a burning steel, so it, it might blast uh, uh, the oxygen too. So it's it's a half inch. I mean, the, the nice part about steel is that it's actually pretty dang cheap because there's a ton of it on the planet. And then it's so freaking strong that if somebody try and bend this, because there's like this next down to like an eight inch thick, and uh, it's, it's like. Don't don't destroy your dash or anything, but it's uh challenging. Go outside. Do this. It, it's also pretty. It's pretty sharp. And uh, yeah. So, so how do you how do you stop the denial service attack of like a cutting torch in steel? Or in, in uh, uh, cutting torch. <laughs> yeah, keep 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 people away from. I, 
is, there, so is there something passive that we can do that we just sit there and keep people from using it? I think, I think the idea is use like a combination of materials that aren't necessarily all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so, so this is really surprising. So like lots of known attacks against steel, right? So we've got the, all, all the attacks against steel. we got like drilling. You can actually temper steel so it virtually doesn't drill at all. This is a drill bit broken in half. Uh, the, uh, the, the, there are other kind of crazy attacks, like, uh, uh, I mean, cutting. So it, it's actually pretty dang hard to like grind through steel. Uh, but, but of course, cutting torch works great on steel. Cutting torch doesn't work on something that won't burn, like concrete. Right? So like concrete's actually pretty tough to, I mean, you can, you can eventually vaporize and stuff. Uh, if you want to cut concrete, oh, did I bring it? I did. So this is a chunk of quartz, I guess I'm back to you. So we've got a chunk of quartz. Oh shoot, did I close cheese? Hopefully I have not. Uh, did I close I have almost been alive this whole time. I haven't uh, had no faith. Okay. So, so this is a chunk of quartz, and then I've, I've cut it, uh, and I've cut it with my diamond. Uh, this is actually really fun. It's just a tile saw blade. I had so much fun just cutting rocks in half. Right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, because the deal with rocks is like the reason they're tough to break in half is because if they were easy to break in half, somebody would have broken them in half, right? And they're creating billions of years. So, uh, so this would be quite surprising, right? So, so diamond, this is not the, you can see it's still perfect. This is small. I didn't want to take the big blade out of my, uh, my tile cutter. But basically, I mean, diamond blade against rocks is actually quite quite effective. Uh, but if you combine these, diamond blade cuts like crap your steel, but there's no place for the steel to go. So it just kind of got gums up on the outside of the cutting. Wheel. So if I have a combination of steel, which you know has these sort of thermal vulnerabilities, and then you know a really hard material like concrete, or especially quartz in embedded concrete, then you might actually be able to get. So, so this actually was typically in a safe, right? You have a thin layer of like hard steel on the outside to just hold the masonry together, and then the, the masonry is providing a sort of bulk of the protection against uh, you know, most of the attack. Because otherwise, just a cutting torch will just uh, basically get you in there uh, right quick. And then I mean the other advantage here is that like concrete's really cheap. It's like a hundred bucks a ton. Rocks are even cheaper. They're like Ten bucks a ton, five somewhere, or it's just like as many as you want for nothing, right? It's just sitting there. It's all about. You the rock. I mean, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, right? If you need like a mile of rock on top of your facility, you don't haul it in. Right? It's just like we need to just drill a hole under the rock. We have rock. Uh, so, so, so the other problem is like even half inch steel. I'm fairly surprised uh, there are kinetic effects of kinetic. So, so other kinetic effects are fine. So, so like high velocity bullet is actually uh, quite capable of going through steel. So this is a different kind of steel. This is AR500 steel. Is anyone heard of it? It's uh, it's yeah, it's it's a, it's a rifle plate. So this uh, this little splat mark here is from like a green tip 556, like the the steel penetrator round, which actually well seems to go through dang or anything. But I was impressed. Quarter inch thick AR500 is able to stop it. And I, I tried AK is uh, the uh, the sort of bigger dimple under there, so it's so it's, 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 it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> so it's possible to have uh, to, to basically just totally stop like. It, 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 here's what's surprising me, but uh, uh, armor piercing is the smaller diameter, the uh, the easier it is to go through because it doesn't have to poke a big hole. Like 45 will be stopped by like a door, like a sheet metal door, whereas nine millimeter, which is sort of wimpier in all ways, but uh, it's it's just much smaller diameter. So it's uh, right, so so we've got so we got lots of denial service attacks right on on that stuff. Uh, the, I mean, it's kind of amazing to me that uh, the offense is so dang effective. Like in, in the military, where they actually care about this stuff, it's more than a more than a hobby. If you look at uh, see, sure, oh, there's one. So so it, this is an RPG. So your RPG has like a, there's this shape charge explosive for this little like you know two pound top man portable like uh, jihadi portable weapon will take out a tank, right? And pretty much, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll go through like half a meter of steel or something, right? Like, and it, it's insane. Because it's a uh, it, it cone shaped set of explosives, basically, like, uh, it, it makes this little, like, several kilometers per second uh, chunk of copper typically. But essentially, it'll go through anything. So it's like, man, there's this little explosive warhead that, you know, that costs virtually nothing. How do we defend our tanks against this? So they have, there, there's the tank, right? And this is, uh, like Russian. And uh, so here, here, this is this is utterly beautiful. So you get the slow motion footage of right, and you think like, well, man, what uh, what happens? The tank is actually fine. So super slow motion. 
So, so we got this warhead traveling along, and then the tank's like, oh, dude, I heard you like explosives, so let me explode your explosives. So, and this is the... Uh, so, so there's an offense for explosives. You're so powerful that, like... Uh, there's this little thing, it's like the size of a, like a VCR tape. And here's this thing that's only like, you know, this little like four pound uh, thing that's going to, that would take out a, you know, a 20 ton tag. Uh, and it's like, well, hey, you know, I, I can explode your explosives, right? So, so this little tiny like VCR uh, shaped thing, it's itself a little shaped, there. it just sends little beads. Shrapnel into the uh, into the warhead, and then the warhead is like, oh crap! We've been trying so bad to like detonate those warheads, the warheads, that that green shape shape. And of course, it's now blasting itself in the tank, regardless of it. Uh, it's far enough away that it's just going to tear itself apart and find this. So it's, it's, it's incredible, I right? But, uh, oh, here's the other beautiful thing. Physics. Why can I not seek backwards in the YouTube community? It has to reload it. When, when, when the explosive goes off, the air is compressed so much that you can actually see the uh, white right being refracted from the air differently as <laughs> it passes through. Right, so, so, so in, 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 in the military world, uh, it, it turns out uh, basically explosives win, and it's like, well, you know what? Your explosives are so undefeatable, the only thing we can use to defeat them is our explosives. Right? I don't know if you can see these little rare actually going through the and then, uh, and see if I can yeah. So like right 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 here and then there's just this rough zone of like turbulence. You can actually get very beautiful depending on the Yeah, so so question. <laughs> how how do you how do you make it so, 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 so there's this big problem, right? If I've got my server is in a safe and it's protected by like full resistant steel, somebody can blow up with explosives pretty dang quick. And, and, and there have actually been some really like embarrassing like safe fail uh, situations where like the safe can be like you, uh, uh, they, they take uh, shape charges they use for like slicing pipes and such and, uh, and so, so they're all over the place in like you know, mining operations and such. So, so if you have a shape charge you can just slice a pipe but it can actually just slice a little access door into a, into a safe and, and then bam you get uh, so, so I mean th this is this is a totally known thing. What, what do you do about that? Done. So outside the first save or the second save, well, no, you have multiple, multiple servers. servers. Multiple servers. So, so, so how can you? So, so tanks have actually developed this thing, active countermeasures. I mean, like this is a really active countermeasure. It's like we are going to blast your thing coming at us. That, that's really hard to pull off. Uh, th th there's a simpler one where it's just like, okay, we got a steel plate on the tank anywhere. We have a layer of explosives. So like something really high comes in, it just disrupts that jet by you know, IC or explosives and rays. How do you protect a computer like this? <laughs> I could I could have the whole outside my safe covered in explosives and like really boss this makes us safer <laughs> right some somehow uh, I mean it uh, it's or, or, it does it does it make you safer I mean how can you so so the trick is like you, you set up the server to be windy enough and the safety strong enough that anything you can make it through the server is going to totally like torch the uh, uh, torch the, the, the thing inside. Yeah, so so I mean it's it's strange how so they're active countermeasures. And the other thing that's interesting would be like the self destruct on your computer system, right? Where it's like yeah, sitting right above my computer is like this you know pile of high explosives. Really like, if somebody cuts into the safe, like. This is just kind of like destroy everything inside. Yeah, yeah, like spare hard drive. Spare <laughs> 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 hard drive <laughs> coated in thermite. Like, hey, if I got a server rack and you start knocking down on the door, how do we stop them? How do I destroy my hard drive? They are effectively and isolate, right? So that not everybody else has access to it. Too. Really hard, actually. Yeah, that's right. I mean, because the thermite, you can do it, but then that destroys the rest of the hard drive and the rack. Plus, the Plus you're on the bottom rack. Right? Yeah, but. <laughs> uh, I mean, bullets sure. actually not that good against uh, 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 servers. <laughs> heating it up actually a good idea. Uh, you can drive up to the turning point where it just loses all data. That's oh, cool. yeah. uh, ah, I didn't think of that. It, 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 but, but it's just like platters, right? So yeah, and the platters are fairly small. So I mean, yeah. So you imagine, but this is sort of the magnetic era. In the post-magnetic era, I don't know what we do about flash.
but fairly heat seems to seem to make my flash unreliable, which is fairly funny to me a whole lot. Uh, let's see. So th th there's an example of this. So, so in the and I didn't realize in prepping this lecture how much of my formative experiences were like late late '90s movies. <laughs> like my, so, so I was looking. I'm like, no, seriously, that was from 1996. So this is uh, let's see the score 2001. And uh, Robert De Niro basically he he blasts. He, so he he uh, he cuts a small hole in the safe top. Right with a, like a, a thermic lance or something, right? So oxygen and uh, and then uh, injects water because the safe has to be filled with water to conduct his tiny explosive charge, which is enough to blow the safe door open. Right, uh, and this is kind of fun because MythBusters they tried all this stuff. So so basically they I mean step one they put uh, they put Adam uh, up there and he 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 managed to torch through the uh, the wall no problem, and he set everything in the safe on fire, which okay that's a, that's a problem. Uh, fill, fills fills the safe with water, and uh, this is one of these classic sort of MythBusters moments where safes don't hold water. They're designed to not hold water, because <laughs> if you lose water or something, you're safe. You want to just leave. Uh, and then uh, yeah, so the safe was filled with water, and they realized they need to redo the seal. <laughs> uh, but then finally, they're like, well, okay, I don't know. As assume assume this actually worked. So some, somewhere they finally blow the safe. Okay, so we've we've filled it up, hopefully. It doesn't have to hold water for very long. Yeah. So it's filled with water. Everybody clears the flash shelter, it's a good sign, and then uh, that was from the movie. And uh, pulls out the perfectly unharmed object, and then in practice they set the little charge, and it's I mean it's the power of explosives, right? This little tiny thing. And, uh, and it blows the door off like exactly, and then the the safe itself recoils. <laughs> yeah. Because all the water is effectively like jetting, jetting out of there. Yeah. So so like uh, that safe has been denial of service, right? That's uh, that's a bit. What do we do in practice? And it's the same deal. We do not allow direct nuclear strikes and just like, well, look, I mean, you got to protect yourself from nuclear strikes. That's a known threat out there. We don't deal with that, right? What's our deterrence against nuclear strikes? So the only thing we'll stop for is other explosives, right? Like, so, so it's it's sort of this. Yeah. So it's, it's so in other words, our our security is reactive. In fact, the deal is like a lot of like you know somebody's like just trying to torch their way into the server room or something. There's a window. Sand. Uh, then, uh, then like you know, my office is right next door, and I might sort of say, "Hey, why are you torching a hole in the wall?" Right? Uh, uh, the whole door, because uh, that, that doesn't burn. Do yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you need in there? Because uh, totally, that would be a lot less of a fire hazard. So, so we got uh, right. So, so, uh, so in practice, right? P people react, right? This is and and uh, and, and so so. Uh, so, uh, countermeasure for for reactive security is them not even knowing their machine. So again, this was from 1996. Tom Cruise was really young. So, uh, so he, he was actually suspended from the air vent. For goodness sakes, never have an air vent big enough for a person to fit because that's just like obvious. What's his name? Uh, he's the bearded guy. Really good. Uh, until the Name. But uh, basically, he's he's like, oh no, there's a rat, and he's deathly afraid of rats, and he's having to like hold the. Uh, yeah. So so the, the, that looks a lot like in the 1990s somehow, and then Tom Cruise uh, is like just about to pull the data out, and then oh no, the rat, I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> and uh, right, so pressure's on the floor. So high high stakes. Uh, Yeah. Uh, so you know, that problem is solved by just one more core. Like, <laughs> yeah. You can three cores for the sake. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, understand the. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So 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 what else? So, 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 so countermeasures, right? Uh, it's, it's 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 amazing to me how this stuff goes back and forth, right? Uh, so 
if we know they're in the machine room, we will send in lots of guys with guns. So we have to make sure that they never know that, uh, that the attackers are trying to make sure that uh, they don't know we're in the machine room. Uh oh. All right, he's sweating. One drop of sweat is enough to set off the pressure sensitive floor because it's an extremely effective. And they've, they've like drugged the uh, this is supposed to be in there. Uh, yeah, the air pressure. Right now. Mike set it on. So it's surprising to me how many, uh, so, so again, Mythbusters have tested these things, right? Uh, how, how reliable can you detect that there is someone in the machine room? And it turns out that, you know, there, there's basically thermal sensors, motion sensors, you know, touch sensors, uh, uh, laser sensors, and the high stakes moment of, oh, God, the uh, drop of sweat. So it, uh, right, so, so let's see, so, uh, so as far as physical security, uh, well, th this was actually really fun. So, so in the Czech Republic, uh, this room, Oh, is that the so here's some lasers, and uh, I'm in the Czech Republic, like trying to make it into the secret area, and they they luckily use green lasers, as you can see, and then as soon as you touch them, the light like came on saying like, hey, you can just uh, intersect with this laser. So let me show you. Wait, wait, okay. So you're in the Czech Republic. <laughs> I'm in the Czech Republic. <laughs> I'm trying to make this like facility, okay. and they had the green lasers, and luckily they set up a fog machine so you could see the lasers. Okay. <laughs> Making sure. I and then when, a... you, when you cross the laser, then the light comes on. That was their only reaction. Like, hey, wait. I'll find it. They were, they were like trying to scout. Yeah. People who were afraid of darkness. Well, so like, well, yeah. They started the fog, but got like all the laser parts and like implemented, and they realized we're out of money. They're <laughs> <laughs> like, let's have a raid. So, yeah, so, yeah. so it, it was actually quite. So, so they basically. Yeah. So this this was in a museum, the yeah. tech museum in, in the tech public, and it was awesome because you basically uh, it was surprisingly hard, right? They, they just had lasers A you could see, and B there just there really weren't that many of them. But it's like okay, that laser right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over that laser. That's the yeah. Now, now of course in practice, what do you want? So counter counter counter. I mean, where how far back are we? <laughs> You want to know that there's people in your building because if you don't know there's people in the building, they can do all kinds of stuff, right? We know close to cutting and all sorts of tools. So you detect people in your building with lasers. What if they detect the lasers? They'll try and avoid the lasers. Lots of ways to do that. They could, they could actually bypass the laser, but like you know, run the laser and like a leak, and uh, you, know, you have two words or something drop into the opposite path. So now you can just redirect the laser whenever you want. So you want them to not see the lasers. What kind of lasers do you Infrared lasers, yeah. So, any, so of course, yeah, infrared you can see with the night vision camera, right? So you use ultraviolet, you can see this with X rays. X rays, you really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, well, okay, we need some sort of signal that cannot be detected by anyone else. We're asking you to detect a signal that doesn't exist. Right? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, you know, if there's no detector for it, we can't even detect it ourselves, right? Neutrinos yeah, are great. Yeah. <laughs> so like, right. Neutrino beams, there's no way for them to ever tell we're sending neutrino beams through there, and there's no way for them to tell. Yeah, there's no, yeah. well, no, even then, like, they just walk around. So, so, so this is, yeah, so, so this is frustrating. Yeah. Actually, it makes me think that, like, some holographic emitter that's, like, look at the hologram of the uh, if, you, if you try these things, it turns out that uh, the room moves. Why would a room move? Oh, you know, the weather. Yeah. This barometric pressure changes because the you know the sound waves on the outside are actually moving the glass. There's a little earthquake somewhere. You don't want to know about all that stuff, right? You want to know like top cruising in your machine room. That's the one thing you care about. And it's hard to so, 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 so you might have like a thermal like a passive thermal detector because like the top his body. How's he going to deter that? He's going to have like a wetsuit, right? The wetsuit is like you know it's going to be an ambulance that's like, insulating his you know, body temperature from outside. So so it turns out there's lots of countermeasures to all of these things. Which is, so the physical world. So, so uh, I'm almost out of lecture here. Uh, see, a lot of physical theory is based on locks. Uh, see, so, so for example, inside a lock, the, the trick here. So, so this, this is this training lock from eBay that uh, Mike showed me. So basically, I mean the the the, the operation of a of a, a lock. Uh, this is the secret key, right? Is the height of each of these little bumps. As the bumps go in, they actually move these little pins, and then the height of the pins when it matches the height of the bumps. Then all of these little half pins line up, and then the lock the lock opens. If you don't uh, if you don't have that, uh, so, so for example, if the key's halfway in, then you you can't turn it because some of these pins are still sort of sticking in the wrong the wrong spot, right? So they're blocking the ro the rotation of this of this thing. And if you try and force it, it's actually designed where it's not it's not going to force these little 
like brass pins are going to shear off, and then the, you know, the, the, you'll have half a half a lot left. Uh, and and uh, so, so this, this is actually a real thing used in all sorts of stuff. It's, it seems so. This seems appallingly like, okay, right. Here's your secret key. Totally secret, right? You can look at a photograph of this. So, so they showed that like uh, uh, you were, voting machines were protected by this like lock, and uh, it turns out they were all protected by the same lock. <laughs> And you could buy a spare key, <laughs> but you didn't even have to because they could look at the catalog image of the key. One spare key for your diable voting machine. Better have a spare just in case, right? Uh, and they could just say like, "Well, I'm going to go to like the dollar store and I'm buy the key blank, and I can just like file it to match, try it, file it to match, try it." Okay, great. It uh, works fine. So it's a secret key, the kind of a silly thing. Hey, here's the other problem: we uh, you can directly manipulate the lock innards. Right, so, so we have just these little pins sticking up, and uh, I don't know. Several people I've seen do this. That you, you basically just, you know, lock picking tools. You're, you're continually applying pressure to try and keep the thing turning, and that basically just, uh, you know, so, so when you when you can push one of these uh, one of these pins back up to the right height, then you uh, uh, then then this thing will turn. And uh, I mean, the, the trick is you can you can actually just manipulate them one at a time and, and work your way along. I have no such skills, but. Uh, that's that's the thing. What's this around? They say it's gonna snow on Wednesday. Yeah. So, so it, it turns out lots of lots of different locks work like this. So this is a big, like really scary looking lock. But why, why is it uh, why is it big? Maybe for marking like diameter. Yeah. Well, everything about it is actually Marky quite guy. bigger than. Yeah. The funny thing is, like, you take like a uh, cheap bike lock, uh, bike lock, and you can just take it. <laughs> it's actually quite surprising. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 there are a lot of known attacks like this. Like, uh, yeah, the, 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 the pins, like just gravity or a sharp impact, can so so key key bumping or as a thing. It's a little key uh, spring spring loaded guns that will pop and basically send send, send, send all these things to the top. Covers on it, so you can't like take a take a can of soda and like thing like that. You can just, <laughs> yeah. like, you can pull it in, pull it out, and shift the shift. Yeah. 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 Wait. That's that's so not uh, that's not that encouraging. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what which implies that like if someone is going to use uh, liquid nitrogen or something. Now, now, so, so, so the deal is like you're not going to keep using the server if like you know. There's thermite all over the floor, and it's, you know half the building's on fire. They're just like, well, I don't know. It looks like they didn't really make it in because uh, current server's still here. Something. Yeah. So, so it's it's the same deal. Like a deadbolt was actually fairly good. This is uh, oh, shoot. this is this is the deadbolt I use in my house. So I hope they're. And uh, I mean, it's it's the same deal. That there's there's just a, there's a lock cylinder exactly like. Uh, yeah. There it is. There's the key, guys. Oh shoot. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> well, it's too it's late now. Door, yeah. Guys. I mean, come on. So it, uh, yeah. <laughs> so right, uh, yeah. So so, so that, that sort of thing's actually used all the time. Ah, uh, right. So I was going to do a demo. I have a demo set up out in the parking lot. Uh, I would like to see if thermite would destroy this. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> so. So what I got is I got a, uh, uh, this is the standard thing to store the thermite in. The thermite's in my trunk because I didn't, I didn't really feel super comfortable. Really? Uh, uh, a flower pot? Really? Yeah. <laughs> flower pot. Because it's ceramic. Because it's ceramic. Yeah. So there's actually a really cool attack with the fiddly doors. Like, there's a table where if you have a blank key, you jiggle it in a lock. The pins are going to make a mark on the blank key. And then you just file it down. Oh, nice. Because you know the standard depth that they those, have. Those pins are. And then, the, uh, and then you just keep trying over and over again over like several days, for example. And then all of a sudden you've got a key to this thing. So I wore wool socks today. If you wore synthetic fibers, stand in the back of the crowd. Synthetic fibers tend to burn. Uh, I don't remember which of those I've seen. I'm hoping I can take the laptop out there. I'm probably going to have to find somebody to actually run the. Let's see. Chris, can I get you to carry my, be my cameraman here? 
streaming this to YouTube with a new party. And I'm hoping that everybody's going to stay connected. Just, uh, just yell. Oh, let's see. Let me turn on the sound so you can go. Just, uh, just like that. That is live. That is streaming right now. Cryptography and data security. Smooth <laughs> 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 A lot of explosives are like bang and it's done, and this is just kind of like. So that, that, that's like where almost you might be able to like destroy your rack without taking out all the. Well, oh, that's a wallet. <laughs> <laughs> a sacrificial wallet. Yeah, it's like isn't that plastic like. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, the orange is a glowing pool of molten steel. Yeah, and there's a cut through that hard drive. And then the hard drive has pretty much... I think we can save the Lawler head. It's flat. It's okay. It's like a I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> Gotta go back. Just leave it. Let's go back inside. Mission accomplished. There's snow right there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. We got the flash show. We can walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I think you'd be okay. With that. I should not have said <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. Now we know. We're in lava head. Quit, quit sacrificing the lava head. <laughs> I don't think it's like a, I think no, it's never gonna get that out. Worst possible decision. Oh, I bet it'll come off pretty easy. Uh, you just gotta scrape it. More thermite. <laughs> More thermite. <laughs> Solves all problems. I like how all of our, our whole solutions now are thermite or snow. <laughs> the two, yeah, the two You know, if we moderate users. Throw to the lukewarm water. <laughs> there, there was the fun of light. Yeah. So here, so this is just aluminum and uh, rock rock.
So like the hardest uh, the hardest part about it is actually just lighting it. Right? That's because you need like a really high ignition temperature. Which I guess. Wait till the 4th of July. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was, yeah. It's got to go somewhere. Are we going to get hammered to this stuff? That's the real, like. Sure. Yeah. That's a lot of the way. That came up with the hammer. Yeah, soup, soup, soup. I think it's, uh, our friend just was born with mom, that's where mine from. So that was about the weight of the hard drives in the thermal. <laughs> yeah, just another bay, right? I don't know yeah. There's, there's radiant heat coming off of the whole air And then What's there's the a big chunk of, uh, does anyone, does anyone remember the burning temperature of the thermite, by any chance? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, we've heard nothing about this. Thermite is something to enjoy or respond to. <laughs> <laughs> like alcohol. Yeah. With alcohol. <laughs> yeah, of course. What do you want with this? Uh, oh, running. I think it is. Oh, I wow. them talking. Cool. Uh, well, thank that you. We're recording 100 grams of thermite. The sparkler is for suspense. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. Much less violence than uh, I was afraid of. Just what I want in a thermite.